Is it worth becoming a full stack developer or should you just focus on just one language? What I want to do in this video is go over the pros and cons of becoming a full stack developer and go over if it makes sense for you. And the answer is yes to both. It makes sense to become a full stack developer, but it also makes sense to master one language. It really depends on what your goals are. If you're looking to work in a company with thousands of developers, you got to think about it like a manufacturing plan. That larger company will have an assembly line process. They'll have a lot of developers who focus on one language. The project manager will give them specific goals and once they're met, they'll move it on down the line. So if your goal is to work for a big company, then learning one and maybe two languages makes sense. It'll give you the opportunity to do a deep dive on that language and learn everything you possibly can in terms of what the capabilities are with that language. Now, if you want to work with a smaller or mid-sized agency, a web design and development agency, then learning more than one language and becoming a full stack makes sense. The smaller and mid-sized agencies don't typically hire thousands of developers. They have a smaller budget to work with. So what you're going to find is typically in a smaller to mid-sized agency, a developer is going to have to wear more than one hat. So in that sense, being a full stack means you bring more value to the table. And then if you want to be a freelancer, then of course you should be a full stack because at the end of the day, you're going to be doing all the work on your own. So with that being said, let me go over some of the other pros and cons of being a full stack developer. One of the benefits of being a full stack is you'll have a greater understanding of how all the programming languages work together from the front end to the back end. And if you're a freelancer, you're working independently. You're working on your own. You are your own boss. And like I mentioned before, if you wanted to work for a smaller agency, it's easier to get a job with a small to mid-sized agency if you're a full stack. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a job at a bigger company. Being a full stack developer in a large company has its benefits. You might get hired to be a project manager or a project lead. Since you'll have an understanding of how the different languages work, you'll be in a unique position to help guide the development of your projects. Another benefit of being a full stack developer is that once you learn one language, it gets a little bit easier to learn the next language, especially languages that are developed from C. You're going to find there's a lot of similarities between the languages that make it easier for you to keep on learning. And there's something to be said about not being 100% dependent on just one language. What if for whatever reason that language falls out of favor? It could take a while before you can actually pivot to a new language. But if you're a full stack, that's not much of an issue for you. Now back to the topic of small and mid-sized agencies or businesses, why would they want to hire a full stack? Well, think about the economics of it all. It's more cost effective to hire one full stack for $120,000 salary versus hiring a front end developer for $100,000 and then a back end developer for another $100,000. That's an $80,000 savings to that smaller agency. Another benefit of being a full stack is that you're always going to be challenged. The process of having to learn so many different languages means you probably won't get bored. I mean, think about it. If you're doing the exact same thing with the exact same language every single day, you might get bored. Now, as a full stack, if you're working remotely, maybe you don't have to work for just one company. Maybe you could work for two companies. Imagine getting a full-time salary from two different companies. So with all that being said, it kind of sounds like you should definitely become a full stack. But let's go over some of the cons as well. One of the biggest cons is that it takes a long time to become a full stack developer, especially if you try to rush the process. That's why I always tell people you got to learn all the fundamentals of one language first, then try to take it a step further and try to really get a good understanding of that language and then learn another language. Rinse and repeat, do the same thing over and over again. This process could take you a while. Is it possible to become a full stack developer in one year? I answer that question in another video, but the gist is and the basics are, yeah, you can become a full stack developer in a year, but you're definitely not going to be a master developer. I've been coding for over a decade and I'm still learning. Another con is that it's going to be difficult to master one language. You're going to have to spend a lot of time learning the ins and outs of multiple languages. So doing a deep dive on one or two languages is going to be hard. Now you could become a full stack developer with a specialty in a language. I wish I was a master of every language that I've learned, but I'm not. But I know a lot about each language and I know how to make them work together. And with over a decade behind me of coding, I think I've become fairly decent at what I do. Now another con of becoming a full stack developer is burnout. The fact that you have to learn so many languages and so many technologies and operating systems and how to make everything work together and make sure they continue to work together when there's changes. Because trust me, changes happen 
often, and they often happen at the most inopportune time. You're going to end up having a lot of late nights and drinking probably a little bit more coffee than you should in order to stay on top of everything. You might also find that the salary offered by some companies to a full stack developer is less than somebody who just focuses on one language. Again, big companies have big budgets. Smaller companies don't have the big budgets to pay such large amounts of money. And sometimes big companies also offer stock options. And if you're working on your own, if you're working as a freelance full stack developer, you're kind of in charge of all your finances. You have to be really good at money management and you have to really be self-directed. Remember, you're the boss. And as a boss, would you wanna hire yourself? So those are some of the key things to consider when deciding if you wanna become a full stack developer. How much time can you commit to learning? Who do you want to work for? How much money do you want to make? I know we all say that we want to make a lot of money, but it ultimately comes down to the type of life you want to live, the quality of life you want to live. If you want to be a digital nomad, become a full stack. You could travel the world, take your laptop, and code from anywhere. You might make less money, but you won't be cooped up inside of an office and you have greater control of your own time. If your goal is to work for a big company and get that 401k, get the health benefits, and not have to worry about focusing on getting clients, then maybe just focus on one language. Yeah, that's another con of being a full stack developer who's working on your own. You have to get your own clients. So on top of learning all the languages and learning how to put everything together, you have to also learn how to be good at marketing, which means you have to be good at content creation, which means you have to be found online and on social media. So yeah, being a full stack developer is tough. It's not easy. It's a lot of work and takes a lot of commitment. And a lot goes into it more so than just learning a language, learning a stack of languages. There's everything else around running a business that goes into it. So with all that that I covered, what's your choice? Would you rather become a full stack developer and know how to put a whole project together by yourself? Or would you rather just master one language? Sound off down below. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.